The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. The greatest experiences in all of human life are the finding and knowing of God. A good friend of mine and co-worker here at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute was one of the men who took part in that monumental task of constructing the great Alaskan oil pipeline. And one of my most prized possessions is a map he gave me of the state of Alaska, which was created by an artist with a cutting torch who cut it out of a piece of the actual pipe which was used to make that great pipeline. It's an incredible piece of work. I keep it on my desk. It even shows the places where the river inlets, coves, and bays are located, all cut out of thick, solid steel. The most unusual map I have ever seen. But still, it is only that, a map, and no map of Alaska compares with actually being there in that indescribable state. You could look at every map ever made of Alaska, including photographic contour maps, but it still wouldn't be the same as the experience of actually being there. Twice I've flown into Anchorage with the cold blue of the Pacific Ocean to the west. I've seen the icebergs floating off the coast, diamond white with deep blues and purples in the crevices at twilight, stretches of snow across frozen tundra, and sculpting the mountains with brilliant splendor against the darker purple of the sky at sunset. I've stood on a mountain near Anchorage and have felt the chilling wind on my face, have seen the crystalline clouds of each cold breath of air that I exhaled, have walked through snow frozen so hard and deep it creaked like old wooden floorboards under my boots with each step that I took. I've breathed the fresh fragrance of the winter air. I've walked through woodlands and have warmed myself in front of the hearth of an Alaskan cabin with logs crackling in the fire. And I've had moose meat for supper and reindeer venison sausages and eggs for breakfast. I've been to Alaska. I've felt it and smelled it and tasted it and seen it from the air and from the ground. And there isn't a map that has ever been made or a chart which will ever be drawn which can begin to portray what the experience of being up there in that magnificent land of the midnight sun for yourself personally is really like and so it is and so it is with God you can read all of the finest books of theology and philosophy about God you can study the scriptures and the poetry about God hear all of the songs and psalms and hymns about God and listen to what other people say and write about what their experience of God is like but it still does not begin to compare with having that experience vitally and dynamically for yourself. Only then will you know how truly, breathtakingly beautiful the spiritual life can be. When you yourself enter into that experience personally, then you will know firsthand that words cannot describe it and songs cannot sing it. It is the most enthralling and complete experience in all of human life. It engages all of the highest aspects of your consciousness, your mind, your attention, your very soul are swept up in one huge heartfelt hallelujah of worship and wonder when you at last experience God for yourself. It's all the difference between looking at a map of Alaska or hiking through the frosty forests and camping by its lakes and drinking from its streams for yourself. It is an absolutely induplicable experience, and no mere description can disclose what it feels like to be there and know it for yourself. So with God, in my most impassioned flights of oratory, in my most poignant and poetic pleas, I can only but begin to suggest in the most imperfect and awkward fashions what the experience of God is really like. Yet I continue to make these broadcasts because even a crude map is better than no map at all. So with the land of the northern lights and so with the experience of the finding and knowing of God. God loves you and this very moment invites you to find and come to know him. As this broadcast goes out by shortwave radio and satellite to all the world, you may be listening in Alaska 
But wherever you may be listening to my words spoken into this broadcasting microphone here near the mountains and waterfalls of Yosemite in California, wherever you may be, right here and right now, you can experience God. I can only sketch a crude map of the experience, but the experience is there. It is real. It is yours for the having. No discourse can describe it, and no song can sing it, but it is there for you. It is genuine, and you can experience it. Be not content with sermons. Seek and find the living God for yourself. That is the greatest experience in all of human life. In this is joy. Said Jesus, I have come that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete. And he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The experience of finding God is utterly rejuvenating to the human soul. As I make this broadcast, it's been dry for weeks here at the Horseshoe Ranch, part of a nationwide drought cycle this year. The leaves of the trees were dusty and the old dirt road parched with sun-baked cracks in the soil. Then just this afternoon, I heard thunder rumbling in the distance and clouds coming in over the mountains. I went out and stood on the long wooden porch by the adobe lodge and watched as the first raindrops spattered on the dusty leaves and the dry grass, and I could almost hear the plants soaking up the moisture as it fell. Three sparrows swooped across the meadow in an aerial ballet, as if dancing on the wind between the cool, wet raindrops. In just three or four minutes, all of nature seemed refreshed and cleansed by the shower. That is what prayer and worship feel like spiritually, like a summer shower on a sunburned soul. Take time through every day of your life to think about God, to converse with God, to praise and worship God. You will find it refreshing and cleansing. God can cool the fevered brow of fear and fretfulness. Learn to practice the presence of God. Cultivate an awareness of God. Every day, deepen the conscious relationship with God. The divine spirit of the universal Father indwells your mortal mind and will stimulate and inspire your thinking and your attitudes. If you will seek to live more in harmony with its teachings, and just as a sudden rain shower on a hot day can make the whole world look new, so can the refreshing downpouring of God's peace and power and purpose make all of your life feel new to you. Your soul needs prayer like the soil needs rain. Your soul needs worship like a flower needs sunlight. These daily practices of the spiritual life are the necessary nutrients of your inner self, your true identity, the real you, your soul. Your body is just a gunny sack for carrying around your soul. Your physical self is not to be despised, but it bears not nearly the significance of your spiritual self. You could lose an arm and a leg or even all of your limbs and suffer paralysis from the neck down, but your mind could still think and your soul could still love and you could still pray and worship and care and recognize truth and beauty and goodness and have the choice of thinking kindly or cruelly, affectionately or meanly because your inner self is your real self. There is more to you than your body. Your soul has its needs and longings too. You were created by God and for God, and nothing but God will ever truly satisfy your soul. You've seen those iced tea commercials on television where a person perspiring in the hot sun falls backward into a cold swimming pool. That's how refreshing it is spiritually to spend time with God in prayer and in worship. Learn to practice the presence of God. Train your mind to be continually aware that God is real, God is alive, God is right there with you. God is your available, friendly, loving, caring, ever-present Father and spiritual benefactor. God knows all about you and all within you. God sees all, hears all, is cognizant of all, and God has all the answers for your life, for everything. Whatever the problem, God is the ultimate solution. Someone may argue, but suppose it's a scientific problem. There would be no science 
if it were not for God. There would be nothing for science to study if there were no God. God is, among countless other things, the master scientist of the universe. God knows all the valid equations of chemistry and physics and a great many equations that human chemistry and physics do not know. God is the ultimate creator and designer of all the laws and principles of astronomy, geology, biology, and microbiology, mathematics, and every branch of science known to humankind, as well as all the branches of science not known to humankind. God knows things you don't even know can be known. God is omniscient. God is all-knowing, so naturally God knows you. God knows all your pains, problems, and possibilities, your hopes and your heartaches, your perplexities and potentials. God knows every aspect of your life and loves you just the same. In truth, God loves you all the more because he knows you so profoundly. God knows your motives, what you have really been trying to do with your life, even when nobody else seemed to care or understand. God knows your aspirations. No matter how miserably some of your most cherished desires may have failed, if you were trying to do good, God knows that and credits you with that. God truly loves you, the real you. And the most joyous and fulfilling and refreshing experience in all of human life is to seek for the will of God and share your inner life with God in daily prayer and praise. And live that way for all your days as the sun or daughter of God, you were born and created to be, and in truth, you really are. For free literature on the spiritual life, write to us here at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer. How do you initiate and establish contact? a relationship with the very creator of this universe, a contact and relationship capable of the total transformation of your life. If you're intrigued by these topics, just write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.